Hey guys, Leland here, and with Pokemon Day drawing near, we've got to be careful because there are rumors and leaks flooding the internet on various websites, but probably the most prominent when it comes to these leaks, you know, they're going to be on 4chan. So this is of course your one and only warning if you don't want to get it spoiled like that milk carton in your fridge that smells a little funny but the best buy date is still good for a few more days, well then go and pour that spoiled milk down your sink. But if you're sticking around, then remember, take all of these leaks with a grain of salt. Alright you guys, these leaks of course originate from 4chan. Sometimes they've been true, other times not so much. We do have a few images with several announcements on each of them. The first one starts off stating that the Nintendo Switch 2 will be announced before Pokemon Presents or Pokemon Day which I can see it happening within the first week of next month with a holiday release on either October or sometime in November. Starting off, they do say that Pokemon Red, Blue, and Yellow will come to Nintendo Switch Online, and it'll be available after the presentation. Now, while I don't really mind this happening, because honestly I would be happy just seeing them put it on the Nintendo Switch in some manner, I understand many out there will be pretty upset though, and rather have it available for purchase. But we will have to see if this even happens, because if they do this, they honestly might as well just put Generation 2 games alongside it, just like how they did with the 3DS Virtual Console. And of course bringing that up, RIP servers, they are officially going down in April. Remember you guys, Pokemon Bank will continue to function after the shutdown of Wii U and 3DS servers, but there is no telling for how long this will function for, so move your Pokemon from bank to home on your Switch as soon as possible. Now the other thing that they are going to show off apparently is going to be an HD 3D remake of Pokemon Gold and Silver, which is set to release in November. This is going to be developed by Ilka for both the Switch and the Switch 2. Which, if it's true, I can see this being the case because Ilka, being a part of Game Freak now, they will be working solely on remakes from now on. As I've said in the previous videos, I do hope, if this is true, that they've learned from BDSP that we don't really want a one-to-one -one remaster of games with only minor tweaks. Give us the Pokemon remakes that we used to get. There is some more information regarding these remakes. The Switch 2 version will have ray tracing, which honestly will be kind of interesting. If the rumors about the Switch 2's hardware is true, it should be capable of handling ray tracing, but I wouldn't really get my hopes up on how well it'll actually perform. The final announcement that will be shown off is a new concept. They say it's going to be similar to Pokemon Legends, but not quite the same. It's going to be based on Unova, with the name Pokemon Hexagon, and this will be exclusive to the Nintendo Switch 2. I assume it might be either a launch title or something that might be announced for early 2025. Now I do like how they say that it's not going to be quite the same, because in my opinion, that's how I feel it's going to be as well. If they do a Legends game based off Unova, it's not going to be exactly the same as Legends Arceus. Possibly a time period set before the games of Black and White. Moving on you guys, we have the second image, and there's something in particular that they do predict after reminding viewers of the Mochi Mayhem event. They promote a 7 star terror raid for Feraligator with the Dragon Terra type. So this is a theory that I've had, and one that I've mentioned over on Twitter last week on the 15th, is that we are getting the starters for the next upcoming Legends game, and they are doing it in the form of the Terror Raids. The most recent 7 star Terror Raid that just ended last week was Blaziken with the Flying Terror type. If by chance we do get Feraligator, this is probably going to be the second starter that we have for the Legends game. This post, however, says there is no main series Pokemon game or DLC that will be announced, and how the presentation will be focused is around more of the spin-off series like Pokemon Go, Masters, and Cafe. However, they do say that a new spin-off game will be announced for the Pokemon Mystery Dungeon series, and they'll be calling it Hall of Fame. It'll have Entei, Raikou, and Suicune playing as the main roles within the game, while their Paradox versions will be the major antagonists at the very end. They continue by saying it'll be different from the previous games, saying that you and your partner play different roles within the story, where you won't always be paired together. Something pretty interesting that they do state is that the gameplay changes up and instead becomes a real-time battle system. To be honest, that's really game-changing from the previous games, when they've always been turn-based, even down to our own movements being counted as turns. 
so I'm not really sure how I feel about this until I probably have seen gameplay, if this is true. They also mention a brand new game, a Pokemon roguelike, which is going to be announced but stated in development. They're going to be showing off a little bit of the gameplay and the reveal of the title being that of Pokemon Reach for the Stars. They say it looks much more animated and cartoony style than most Pokemon games that we're used to. I'm not entirely sure what they mean by this, but of course it's going to be really interesting to see a roguelike Pokemon game. The third image that we have starts off by saying mentioning of a new Let's Go game for Raikou and Entei. And honestly, after reading a little bit further, it seems pretty odd. When we reach the Burning Tower, we are going to be able to catch the respected legendary beast of those games. After that, we will be able to get them as a ride Pokemon. They do also state that this game is also developed by Ilka, so word of caution. During their presentation, and after thanking viewers for playing Scarlet and Violet, they do remind everyone to play the Mochi Mayhem event. After which, they do announce the next 7-star Terror Raid, which will be Superior, which, you guessed it, the Dragon Terra type. So, it's a different Pokemon, but there are some similarities to the previous post, both of which being Terror Raids featuring the Dragon Terra type. To be honest with you guys, it'll be interesting to see if we see any announcement either before or during the event that shows both of these terror raids. The interesting reveal for this post is a new Pokemon Stadium game being developed by Bandai Namco. It is certainly possible since they created both Pokemon games and the new Pokemon Snap game. So of course it is possible that they are potentially developing this new Stadium game. We'll be able to send Pokemon from home, and it'll launch with the capabilities of Generations 1, 2, 3, 8, and 9. Later generations will be added one at a time. Now I'm not really sure how I feel about this, the whole compatibility for Generations 1, 2, 3, 8, and 9, because of course Pokemon Home has the ability to connect to Let's Go, which is a re-remake of the original Pokemon Yellow, Generation 4 Remakes, Legends Arceus for Generation 4, Generation 8, Sword and Shield, and Generation 9, Scarlet and Violet. And the last reveal for this post is Legends Kirim, which is going to be teased for 2025. They do state that we will get glimpses of the open world, and it is said to be notably better than Arceus. They do also say that the starters are going to be shown, and we're going to be getting Groki, Chimchar, and Froki. They also say that a new dragon type, Evolution, is going to be shown, but there is no name given. They are also going to be teasing the original dragon, but it will not be fully shown off during the presentation. <laughs> so if these starters are true, then my theory is completely blown out of the water. But of course, we'll have to wait and see. The last image of leaks that we have starts off with these shiny distributions for both Coridon and Maridon. As well, raid events for both Lugia and Ho-Oh will be available after the presentation. They say Pokemon Red, Blue, Yellow, and Gold, Silver, and Crystal will be available for purchase on the eShop. Now, this of course is something that I'd rather see happen versus simply putting them on the online service, which I'm sure others will want to see as well, because with the closing of both Wii U and the 3DS servers, lose that ability to play them on our Switches. However, if we're able to purchase them from the eShop instead, then we'll be able to play them long after the Switches online servers are shut down as well. To me personally, this is honestly the better option to do, versus simply putting them behind a paywall of the online service. However, if this is true, I feel like they should also include Ruby, Sapphire, Emerald, as well as the remakes Leaf Green and Fire Red. The last piece of leaks on this post, however, they instead say that they're going to have Legend Celebi announced. We'll get gameplay that shows off a few areas, crystals grow from the ground, covering a shrine, and then Celebi appears, flying towards the camera, revealing the title of the game. At the end of which, we are going to be get a release of November 2024. Alright you guys, those are the image leaks so far. What do you think? For me personally, I'd love to see them announce the original games of Generations 1 through 3 be available for purchase on the Nintendo Switch eShop, instead of simply putting them on the online service of the Game Boy and Game Boy Advance. Because I'd much rather be able to purchase these games and have them available forever on my Switch, instead of having it locked behind a paywall on the online service. I am expecting both the Let's Go game and Legends games being announced, whether it's for Johto or Unova. 
Honestly though, my money is still on Unova for the Legends games, but Johto can have the Let's Go. Because that does kind of like fall in line of the re remakes that they're currently doing, because they did that with the original Let's Go Pikachu and Let's Go Eevee. I still have a feeling, of course, if we get Legends Kiram, that means we should also be getting the remakes for Generation 5, but honestly, who knows. Whether, of course, the spin-off games mentioned will be announced, honestly, is anyone's guess. It would be super cool, though, to see a roguelike game. So guys, that's it. Let me know what you think of these leaks. Be sure to share your thoughts and theories of what we might be seeing get announced during the Pokemon presentation on February 27th down in the comments. Be sure to slap that like button here on the video if you're new and you made it here to the end and you enjoy the content, but you also want to see more, be sure to subscribe to the channel, as I'll be either streaming the presentation when it goes live or covering it in a video. With that being said, my name is Laylin, and I do hope you all have a wonderful day, and I will see you in the next one. Later!